Hello, I'm Atsuba George and I'm here with my wife again, Gloria, and we are so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, let's call for that daily bread before we go into the broadcast. So declare these words with me. Everyone watching us right now, declare. Listen, don't just say it in your mind. Authorize Speak me. it out. Speak it out. Praise God. Because we need to confess it. Sometimes, you know, people go, uh, must I, must I, doesn't God know what is in my heart? Listen, when it comes to provision, it is not just God. There are angels involved. And angels don't know what is on your mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is God. So, so God have commanded the angels that when you hear my children declare or demand for their daily bread, you go into action. So now we say declare with us. And then you're, mm, I'm saying it in my mind. The angels will be waiting. Praise God. But that's not your case in Jesus' name. Amen. So declare this word with us. Say, Father. Father. Today. Today. I demand. I demand. And I receive. And I receive. My daily bread. My daily bread. It's coming to me now. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, we just bless you for today's broadcast. Thank you for releasing your grace upon our lives. Amen. And we declare now every burden is lifted. Amen. Every yoke is destroyed from Amen. everyone tuned in right Amen. now. I declare freedom in everything that concerns you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, Amen. we began yesterday. Yeah talking about hey first of all welcome to the month of february today yes. is the first of february yes. praise god Hallelujah. so welcome to the month of february and i sure know like we told you yesterday god is dealing with a lot of restoration concerning families Family. yeah and that's why listen if, if you we inviting you to join the the prayer meeting that's going on you know get to the next watch and and join us join us via zoom the the, the the zoom link yeah the zoom id is on your screen and and passcode is on your screen join us and let's let's just let's just in in fellowship in faith and in unity bring forth god's glory in our families and, and on the earth generally praise god. Yeah, praise god oh thank you lord jesus thank you, Father. so so make sure you do that all right we we, we got talking about Family matters. That's what we titled it, you know. Yes. <laughs> Family matters, and we began to look at Abraham's life and what got God to be so close to Abraham. And yesterday we realized that it was because Abraham was a keeper of, of God's word. word. Of God. Yes, he was a keeper of God's word, which yes. Jesus said in in, in John chapter John chapter fourteen. You know, he was telling Judas when. Judas, not his carrot. <laughs> yeah, I love saying that. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I love saying that. Mm -hmm. You know, when Judas asked him, how are you going to reveal yourself to us and not, and to, not the to the world? world. Yeah. And Jesus said, this is how it works. When he, if a man loves me, he will keep, keep my, my word. word. And my father will love him and we will come oh. and make our abode with him. So now you understand why God made his abode with Abraham. Abraham. So much so that God was passing to go and destroy Sodom. He said, I've got to stop by and have See? fellowship with Abraham. Exactly. <laughs> Praise God. Now, exactly. That's the kind of person I would love to be. That's the, that's the kind, kind of, of person family. we are. Yes. <laughs> and that's the kind of family we have to the glory of God. And that's the kind of family that you as a child of God should have. Yep. Very true. So there are certain things that you would do that, you know, draws God to you. Abraham is a role model today because he did something outstanding and scripture talks about him so often. I like to refer to Abraham all the time when I'm talking about families because the example he set was so phenomenal that God had to mention him. I know of Abraham. When someone says, I know of you, that means you've been tested, you've been tried, and you've been proven. Several circumstances has warranted that um, affirmation, that consistency, consist, you know, for in attitude. in attitude and in your action. And this is not coming from man. 
is coming from God himself. Yes, beyond action. action. Because man would most likely want to judge all the time by what we see on the outside. yeah. Yeah, but now this is God saying, I know this person. I have seen that what he does on the outside corresponds with who he is on the inside. And it attracted God's favor, God's blessing to him. Let's go back to that scripture. Let's just read it again so that we can, you know, start talking about it. Um, Genesis Genesis 18, 18, verse 19. Um, Verse, um, actually from verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Remember that God had already you know, giving him consistent words. Abraham was walking towards something. He wasn't walking blindly. God visited him. God spoke to him. God said, come out from your father's house. And this is what I will do for you when you come out. And God listed those things for him. I would bless you. So God didn't just say, come out of your father's house. Exactly. Okay, okay, sir. God said, come out of your father's house. This is what... I, I intend. This is my. Keep. This is what I have in my. Now that's in my the heart word for you. Abraham was keeping the promise that God had made, made to him. Because, because sometimes we don't know. Okay. The Genesis. This is like the yeah. you know the foundation of the relationship that God had with Abraham. So when we say keep God's word, sometimes people are confused as to what do I keep. How, how should <laughs> I go is, about is it? it? Actually saying the word of God all the time. Mm-hmm. No. The promise that God has, everything God commands you to do have a promise attached, attached to, it. to it. Because God is a very purposeful God. Yes. That's why Paul prayed and said that you will know what is the hope of, of your, your calling. calling. So when God says, come out of your father's house, he didn't just say, come out because the house is going to burn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he says, Come out to a land that, that I, I will show, show you. And then yeah. he began to tell him what he would do. do. So when Abraham was leaving, he had all these things in, in his, his mind. In his heart. What God is planning to do in my life. Yeah. You may not understand. I don't think he understood everything that God said. Mm-hmm. But he believed God enough to follow him. Yes. And he kept those words in his heart. And it affected his daily decision and his daily walk with the Lord. Yeah, because when you keep God's word, the sign that you're keeping God's word is what how you do. it affects your the day-to-day decision. Yes, yes. So you see, God referred to what he said to Abraham. Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him for i have known him anytime i read the scripture and i see this i have known him i'm like i want to be this person that god can talk about and say for i have known him and i know him in order that he may command his children and his household after him that they may keep the way of the lord to do righteousness and justice my own translations is righteousness and some translations talks about judgment and right and justice that the lord may bring to abraham what he had he has spoken to him i look at this scripture and i see how that a house that is divided against itself cannot stand abraham started this work with the lord god called him out and he had sarah with him as his wife now god says you're going to be a great nation meaning children will come from these people so what are we going to pass down to our children because the great nation does not stop with an individual an individual cannot be a great nation an individual represents a great nation like god is going to start working with you and then from your consistency with him from your righteousness with him from your faith work with him the next generation 
comes and benefits from it because you are intentional about transferring that relationship that you enjoy with the father to your, your children. children now abraham didn't even just wait till he had isaac abraham had people with him remember he left with lot yeah and we know even though lot ended sadly we can still talk about how that lot benefited from his Abraham's uncle work abraham's work with god because lot was also wealthy being with abraham and to to an extent lot you know he lived in so but he he didn't become Come. exactly like the people of so exactly and i think that was because of the influence of abraham what exactly yeah. number exactly. two when the angels came to Sodom, he recognized them. Lot. Lot recognized them. Mm -hmm. And showed the same kind of hospitality Abraham, Abraham showed. showed to the angels when they met him. So exactly. Now, now, Lot was Abraham's nephew. Mm -hmm. So Abraham literally was like Lot's father. Yes. So he must have learned those things from oh, his Abraham, uncle. which now benefited his life. Just like you said, he didn't you know when that you see when you follow you must make sure you're following completely yes so you don't make the same mistake with lots mm -hmm. because lots because of strife you know everyone was trying to avoid strife, strife yes, they separated. separated and lot made the biggest mistake of his life like i've always said when i talk about that when abraham said the land is before you choose mm -hmm. if lot was smart he should have said uncle no you, you tell me where what, i should exactly go. Wherever Abraham told him to go, he would have just taken it and God would have blessed. Yes. But because he he went away out of strife in his own heart. Mm -hmm. See how he ended up. He ended up in a cave. Yes. And then even before getting to the cave, like you rightly mentioned, <coughs> he maintained his righteousness in Sodom. Yeah. He was not influenced. Yeah. He had so much evil going on around him. He saw so much that could have influenced him to change but he stood firm he probably must have realized <laughs> i shouldn't have been here in the first place but now i am yeah, here yeah. so what do i do yeah. i better just stay in my righteousness he didn't get lost completely exactly he didn't why did i bring lot up sometimes we say oh uh i'm not yet married or i don't have children and whatever what god like you don't see beyond the now so you don't even realize that that colleague in your office that staff in your home it could be your help it could be your security man it could be you know someone that comes to you your, exactly anybody Sinus. around you is like the training ground for you to use to pass to them what you are receiving from the lord freely i have received and freely i am supposed to give yeah. so as an individual that represents a great nation what are you receiving from the lord are you consciously receiving because god said i know of abraham first abraham as a person as an individual and abraham's father terah was a good man because he actually was going somewhere abraham must have you know, learn some things from his father. I'm just saying from my own observation yeah. from scriptures. So Abraham recognized God when God spoke to him. He knew the voice of God and he started embracing it. He started walking with it consciously. He started building that relationship that he has with God, even before passing it down, you know. Because, because you know, the Bible said, Terah, his father took him and his wife and they were on their way to Canaan. Yeah yeah so what am i saying right now as an individual as the great nation because sometimes we just claim these promises without submitting ourselves to the processes of the work that we should have with god what kind of fellowship do you have with god what kind of relationship do you have with god what has god spoken to you are you guarding it jealously are you consciously passing it down 
to the people around you. Maybe you're not yet married or even though you're married and you don't have children yet. Are you consciously passing this relationship that you have with the father to the people around you? We are going to still talk about this and how you should go about this in the next episode because our time is up. It's up. Praise <laughs> Hallelujah. God. Now, just so much to say. Yeah. Let's just bless. <laughs> just bless everyone. Hallelujah. And, and, and release them to an abundant grace to you. Father, give me your hands. Thank you. Thank you, Father. There is an abundant grace resting on everyone watching right now. The grace to reposition them to a focus Amen. in you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. We will see you tomorrow. Now, don't miss this one. Now, share. Share this broadcast. Please. Share it with everyone you know. Because they will be blessed. Praise yes. God. Yes. We love you so much. So much. God bless you. Until tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>